Hello and welcome to A Critical Dragon, where I talk about narrative in books and in films and in television. And today we are going to look at Memories of Ice, uh, book three of the last book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson. And we're going to have a look at the prologue. And actually, I'm going to do something that I normally don't do with, with analysis of prologues. Uh, I'm going to have to, to split this up because I wanted to just do a couple of, of shorter videos. Um, it seems that people prefer only a little bit. So I'm going to break this up. And in this first video, I'm going to look at something that might surprise you. I'm going to look at the year that this prologue is set and talk about that because there's bizarrely enough, quite a lot to say about it. So for people worried about spoilers, um, I will be referencing Gardens of the Moon. I will be referencing Dead House Gates, and I will be referencing the prologue and the prologue only of Memories of Ice. None of the information that I'm going to discuss uh, occurs elsewhere. It's all in these these first three books uh, or two books and the prologue. So that out of the way, if you're worried about spoilers, thanks so much for watching so far. I will see you in another video. For those of you who are going to stick around, thanks. Right. So why do I want to talk about the year it's set? What is the year? And the year is 298,665 years before Burns sleep. So let's just look at this figure. 298,665. And you might be thinking to yourself, AP, why? Do you think this is important? It's just roughly 300,000 years ago. And that is why it's important. Because when we read this, we know this figure, this, the, the year, the size of the time here, how far back in time it is. All we need is roughly 300,000 years ago, and we as readers are good to go. That's all we need. So why has Ericsson decided that 298,665 is what he's going with? And what I'm going to suggest is this is Ericsson signaling to the reader, don't worry about time skills. Don't worry about the time frame. Don't worry about the timeline. Don't worry about making sure that everything matches up because in the grand scheme of things, the timeline is not that important. Now, Malazan veterans often say this and it has to do with other things. But why am I suggesting it here? And I want to posit something to you. So we know that this is roughly 300,000 years before burn sleep, which is over 300 thousand years before the start of the rest of the Malazan novels, really, uh, that we've looked at so far. Gardens of the Moon, Emperor Kelmved's reign. That's where it started, although obviously the main action occurs during Lysine's reign. Dead House Gates, it's during Lysine's reign, and then the major action happens further into Lysine's reign. But here we have deep time. Here we have the ancient past. and to put it in perspective, think about what you know happened on this planet 300,000 years ago. Let's, let's round out. The, let's uh, add on the 1,335 years you would need to bring it up to 300,000. And then let's not even try and calculate when Burn actually went to sleep, because that was obviously some time ago as well. Um, this is a long time ago. So 300,000 years in Earth's history, where were we? I honestly have no idea because once we get past about 5,000 years, you're like 10,000, 15,000, you know, let's, let's just start rounding by the thousand. And then once you get past um, sort of 100,000, you go, well, you know, we'll round to the tens of thousands or maybe fifties of thousands when you get up to about half a million years ago, you're like, well, you know, let's just round by a quarter of a million here, a quarter of a million there. 
specificity gets lessened and lessened. And the important thing that we have to, to look at are the general trends or the rough estimates of these things. And so with 298,665, the only way that Ericsson could have made it clearer that this is not a real date is if he'd put, and it was March the 13th on a Tuesday at 27 minutes past three in the afternoon, just before tea. If he had put all of that additional information in, it would have been abundantly clear that not necessarily that he is making fun of the reader. He is not making fun of the reader. He's not making fun of us with this. But this is a way of signaling with the over specificity of the, the year that this is not the actual exact time when this happened. No one in this world will have noted down the exact year. And you might go, oh, well, you're just creating an excuse. And I'll have to say, I'm not. Because I come to this with evidence from the prologue, which is, if you look at the epigraph immediately above the date, it is from the Ancient Histories, Volume 1. And the style of writing in that epigraph is grandiose, it is poetic, it is overly embellished, it is a grand narrative that has been created by this historian. But we would think it's a history, it's meant to be specific, it's meant to be factual, it's meant to be what actually happened. But it is very clear that this history is an approximation, it is an interpretation. The the spilled blood did not form the blood of seas, literally. It, was, it is a figurative description. It is a metaphor. The sorceries raged until the sky itself was fire. Could that be literal? Potentially. But if the sky was on fire, why is there any life left on the planet? But flames in the sky or coruscating uh, energies shooting through the air that we can believe these it's to evoke a sense of the grand conflict and immediately below this overblown epic grandiose um beautifully exaggerated language we have this incredibly specific year 298,665 years. This, I would argue, is an absolute signal, a wink, a hint to the reader, do not worry about the little details. Do not fixate on the little details. What we are concerned about here is a grand narrative. It is roughly in the right time frame. It is roughly an accurate representation of the major events, but it is not a factual account of what happened. It is a story, it is a narrative, it is a conflation of events that has been given elements of historicity, elements of factual representation, but also artistic elements where liberties have been taken with the exact nature of what happened and when it happened. And I think this incredibly specific date in combination with the embellished language of what a history is, is a clear signal to the reader that don't worry about this. Now, let, let's talk about what this actually means in terms of narrative. So we could say that uh, this is a narrative conceit, that the author is doing this specifically so they do not have to worry about making sure that every aspect of all of these different characters' lives and every aspect of the timeline marries up exactly. That 
they wanted a way to fudge the issues. They wanted a way that they didn't have to worry about making sure that they knew the exact sequence of the exact events and plotting out the timeline for every single character. We've already seen in Gardens of the Moon and Dead House Gates, there are a lot of characters. And if you think of how much time would have to go in to marrying up all of those details for all of those characters on a timeline that is going to extend over hundreds of thousands of years, that is a level of detail that is unnecessary for a narrative that is theme driven, that is character driven, and that is focusing on the major events. And you might think that this is a cheat and it's not a cheat. It, it's an artistic decision. It's a, um, a narrative decision. It's an authorial decision about trying to highlight what is important and what isn't important. So I'll give you a, for instance, if you were out uh, meeting friends or something, or you're having a coffee somewhere or a drink somewhere, and you bump into someone famous and you're like, oh, wow. And then they sit down with you and they have a drink with you. And then they go, well, actually, I'm going off to dinner here. Would you like to join me? Because I'm going to, and they, they take you to dinner and you're sitting with all of their uh, important or famous friends and you have an amazing night and you come back. Brilliant. So the next day you're telling this story to someone and you say, oh, you know, we went out, I was having a quick coffee and it was, you know, it was about five o'clock. And then about 20 minutes later, this person came in and they sat with us and we had this thing. And then we, you know, we had one drink and then we went to dinner. And the person you're telling the story to goes, well, hang on a sec. You said you arrived there at five o'clock and then they came in about 10 minutes later. So that would make it five ten. And then they had one drink. How long was this drink? Because they went to dinner, what, before 6 p.m.? It was, what was it, 5.30? Who goes to dinner that early? And you would kind of look at them and go, I'm trying to tell you a story about me meeting this incredibly famous person and going to dinner with these incredibly famous people. That's, that's the meat of the story. And you're concerned about the fact that I didn't get the timings exactly right. You're, you're kind of overlooking the forest for the trees. And I think that's what this, this one, one time frame. This one timestamp, this one date is signaling to the reader. Because anyone looking at that date is going to go, oh, roughly 300,000 years ago. That is all a reader will need from this. But Erickson is so specific about this. You go, why is he being so specific? He must have a reason because he could have easily put in 300,000 years ago or um, roughly 300,000 years ago, circa 300,000 years ago, any one, there are any number of different ways he could have represented a number that would have made more sense. But he chose to be very, very specific. And I think that this is the reason to signal to us, don't overlook the wood for the trees. This is all about a grand narrative, a grand history. And with all history, liberties will be taken. So there's a lot more to talk about in the prologue, but this, this one thing was so much fun that I wanted it to be its own little video. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you, if you disagree with me, if you, if you have a different um, explanation for why Ericsson is using this very specific date, please, please let me know in the comments because I just think it's hilarious. I think it's brilliant. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.